Hi guys, today I'm going to share with you 45 things you can do at home when you're bored. I've classified them into six categories. Physical activity, creative, organizing, social, fun alone and self-love. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel. Let's also stay connected on Facebook and Instagram. So, let's begin from the first group of activities I'd like to suggest to you today, which is physical activities. And if you need some inspiration on where to get started, I can really recommend you a website called therebe.com. That's where I found this sheet with a lot of inspiration on different groups of exercises for my abs. But their database is huge. You can find all sorts of exercises. In the first row, they have the easiest ones. And as we move down, they become more and more difficult. So if you find and print a couple of sheets like this one for different muscle groups, you literally never run out of exercising ideas. I have to confess, I didn't go to gym for over a year, pretty much since I got pregnant. I just didn't feel I could physically do that. And finally, the time has come for me to go back on track. Unfortunately, our gym is closed at the moment, so I don't have access to the usual machines but I have access to my baby. She offers me almost eight kilos of weight to lift, and for me, that's quite heavy. Here you can see different types of exercises that I can do with her, mainly for my abs and my arms. When I'm exercising my legs, she's just playing with me. Right now I started from the easiest exercises, but I plan to gradually increase their intensity. Though my favorite physical activity at home is dancing Zumba. It's fun, it's good for you, like the best cardio you can imagine. On YouTube you can find a lot of playlists with amazing music and choreography, and all you need to do is clear up some space in your apartment. One of the following days I also plan to learn a new style of dance, also by watching YouTube tutorials, and hopefully share it on TikTok. I just joined it, it's Lilith Moon style, but I hope I'll be able to get the handle Lilith Moon Life, same as my Instagram. Right now it's taken by someone, but we'll see how it goes. I'm also trying to incorporate yoga in my daily routine. It's renowned to enhance your health, increase strength and flexibility, help you relax, manage stress, depression and anxiety. I don't think I ever talk about it in public, but anxiety is a huge issue for me. The second group of activities I'd like to suggest to you are creative things. Whenever I'm feeling down, I always try to do something creative. It's great to cheer me up, and usually I go for easy yet satisfying tasks. I have to tell you, coloring books are definitely awesome not only for kids. You can Google coloring sheets for adults, choose your favorite designs, print them out, and go ahead and color them. In this video I'm using brush pens, but honestly, regular pencils would have been much better. Here I just wanted to try something new and I wasn't really impressed. So yeah, I vote for regular pencils. I think I've been using journals forever, to track my personal development, connect with my feelings, emotions and goals. Finally I decided to bring my journal into the next level by adding photos and decorations. I'll be also printing pictures for a photo album and for a baby album. Perhaps I'll make a several of them. I think it's like the best present for grandparents. My baby album is already pre-filled, I just need to add photos. When I was looking for creative journaling ideas, I felt like I absolutely had to learn some calligraphy. It's actually easier than you may think. I'm not talking about professional level, just some personal journaling level. All you have to do is practice some basic strokes and then connect them into letters. Then you practice letters and connect them into words. On Google you can find quite a few lettering practice worksheets for free. What you do need to get is a brush pen. I ordered mine on Amazon. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that my photos always match in color. I don't use any specific filters, just edit each picture separately in Lightroom, so if you'd like to bring your Instagram to the next level, I really recommend you watching some Lightroom tutorials. Let me know if you'd like me to make some for you. Playing with virtual makeup is really fun. You can see what you'd look like with different types of makeup, and then try out your favorite looks in real life. 
You can test different shapes of eyebrows, eyeliner, eyelashes, apply different colors of lipsticks and shadows. Those experiments would be obviously much faster and easier than using real makeup. You can also see what does not work for you, something that's really worth knowing if you want to look your best and avoid makeup mistakes. If you're new to my channel, you probably don't know that I filmed like hundreds of hair tutorials over the last couple of years and especially on different types of braids. So I invite you to catch up on them. And if you like the messy bun that I'm wearing in this video, I have a tutorial on 10 messy buns for medium length hair where I show you how to do it. I'm going to link that video over here. I also have a couple of videos on how to wear a scarf over your neck or over your head so if you miss them, feel free to check them out. They're going to be linked over here and in the description box. I used to travel quite a lot and finding a good nail technician was always a real challenge. I didn't have a choice. I had to learn how to do my own nails, gel extensions and nail art. So I watched a lot of YouTube tutorials, practiced at home and voila, I can finally be proud of the result. I loved origami since I was a kid, but believe it or not, it used to be almost impossible to learn it. We had no free YouTube tutorials and the special origami book was very difficult to find. So I'm really happy to catch up on my origami skills. When my daughter gets older, I'll be definitely doing it with her. It's a great activity to develop hand-eye coordination, fine motor skills and mental concentration. Plus for me, it's really relaxing. In my ongoing weight loss journey, I decided to focus on healthy foods and explore the endless possibilities of my intelligent multi-cooker. And when I'm feeling naughty, I cook my own desserts, since I can control the amount of fat and sugar that goes into them. Recently, I decided to make my own cherry dumplings. They turned out to be absolutely amazing. So I'll share the recipe with you. For the most delicious cherry filling I ever tried in my entire life, and I'm not even joking here, you're going to need some cherries, frozen or fresh, sugar, cornstarch, and maybe some cinnamon if you like it. Personally, I love it. You need to mix the ingredients and boil until the filling gets thicker, and for that you can even use a microwave. Next, you need to cool it down. That's how my filling turned out, and honestly, I could just go ahead and eat it with a spoon. But no, I'm going to save it for later. And now for the dough, you're going to need flour, salt, water, milk and olive oil. You want to combine water, milk and salt and let it boil, and then immediately pour this boiling liquid into your flour. You want to immediately mix everything with a spoon until the dough cools down a little bit. At this point you need to spend 5-7 to seven minutes kneading your dough with hands to form a homogeneous ball. Once it's done, leave it for 20-30 to 30 minutes. Next, you want to split your dough in four equal pieces, roll out each piece and use it to form eight dumplings. In the meanwhile, you want to keep the remaining dough in a plastic bag to prevent it from drying out. At the last time I was making dumplings, I think I was still a teenager and honestly, no one in my family knew how to do them properly. They were kind of edible and definitely not presentable. Finally, I could watch so many videos on YouTube on how to make them properly that I decided to pull up my steaks and actually attempt doing beautiful, presentable dumplings. The first ones didn't turn out very well, but I think toward the end of the procedure I finally started getting the hold of it. I won't be teaching you how to make decorative dumplings in this tutorial because I'm simply not qualified for that, but you can definitely find many tutorials on YouTube. So that's how my dumplings turned out. What do you think? The following group of activities I'd like to suggest to you today is everything related to organizing and cleaning. I know it doesn't sound very fun, but believe me, the results are really rewarding. With jewelry, it's one of the times where out of sight, out of mind is actually a bad thing. At some point, you totally forget that trendy statement ring or necklace. If you're like me and have been collecting jewelry for years, you don't even remember what you have. That's when you really need an organized, clean way to store everything and still have an easy access to it. For me, the best solution was to use transparent plastic containers and store similar items together. I sort them by color so that I can just pull out the right container depending on the color of my outfit. 
In case of small rings and earrings, I like to store them in ice cube trays. It's very convenient. Once everything is sorted, it goes into a special jewelry drawer. Plus, I have an extra box for the items that are my current favorites. I always have such a set or two. The same goes about the clothes. If you don't go through them every once in a while, you end up forgetting what you have and wearing the same things again and again. So at least twice a year, it's good to reorganize your closet. And if you fold everything properly, the chances are that you'll make your space feel so much bigger. Maybe you'll even find that sweater you've been looking for. It was long overdue, but I have finally dedicated a special drawer for my winter clothes and rolled all my sweaters like so to have an easy access to them. It's much better than folding them. And while organizing your closet, you'll probably find new ways to style your old clothes and create new looks without spending extra money. And now I'd like to share with you a quick trick on how to decide which clothes you don't really need in your life. It's just an idea, but I find it very helpful. So after you reorganize all your clothes, you want to hand them with the hook facing toward you. Next, every time you wear an item, you'll be handing it back with the hook facing away from you. So imagine if after one year you still have clothes hanging with the hook toward you, it probably means that you don't need them in your life, since you didn't wear them even once. Donating clothes that you or your kids don't wear anymore will clean out your closet, help people in need and help saving the environment. Did you know that making clothes takes hundreds of gallons of water, while disposing of the waste produces toxic gases? All these things can be avoided if we simply donate our clothes for use. And not only clothes, also different types of textiles, like old bed sheets, towels. I'm not sure if you know it, but almost all textiles in our homes can be recycled, no matter what's their condition. And if you go ahead with the previous ideas, you'll probably find a lot of clothes that need a refreshment. Big laundry time! Now that's something that my mother does every single time she visits me. She throws away tons of expired medications. Finally, I went through my extensive makeup collection and as heartbreaking as it was, had to say goodbye to many products that expired long time ago. <sighs> My husband likes to buy tons of canned food, until recently it was one big mess. Finally we can see what we have. Also, I've gotten a special box for my spices and labeled them. For some reason I'm always annoyed when I have to open individual boxes and prefer to have them all in one box. If you have hundreds of papers, invoices and receipts that need to be stored safely, it's good to get a folder with multiple pockets and labels. I used to have just one big folder for everything, and getting this one made a huge difference. Now I can find what I'm looking for 10 times faster, and I actually have three folders like that. One for my work, another one for my personal stuff, and the third one for archives. Sorry guys, washing your windows is quite a workout, and perhaps I should have classified it as a physical activity. I'm not quite sure what it's doing in organizing. I guess in my mind, organizing has something to do with cleaning. I don't know how about you guys, but my phone is constantly running out of memory. So I definitely need to sit down, delete all those redundant photos and videos, and I think once it's done, I'll free like 90% of my phone memory. Finally, it's time to move on to something more fun, and here are some activities you can do with your friends or family. My husband and I, especially me, we really enjoy playing this discovery game. It's very similar to Monopoly, but for couples. It's like a date night in a box, designed to cultivate intimacy and connectedness. It's very exciting and unique. Question games is something I really enjoyed playing with groups of people during house parties. It's a perfect icebreaker if you don't know people really well, you just pull out different questions and everyone has to answer them. So it's a great way to get to know each other. Now I'm playing it with my husband. We got a special box with questions for couples and it's a great way to trigger interesting conversations. I still have to convince my husband to become my partner in crime because, yeah, he's resisting, maybe I need to get him drunk or something. 
I don't know. I used to do it with my friend and it was like our favorite activity ever. And you know what's the best part of it? Is that we're both rubbish in karaoke, so that's hilarious. You know, nowadays it's very easy to find good karaoke songs because you can find them on YouTube. Just type the name of your favorite song with karaoke next to it and there you have it. Another fun thing you can try out at home if you're in the mood for something a little bit silly is putting on a soap opera, muting the sound and doing your own voiceover. You need just a couple of funny people and you're going to have a laugh of your lifetime. I tried it once with my friend and it was absolutely hilarious. Another thing I've been enjoying quite a lot recently is catching up with my long distance friends and family. Usually we have like a huge time difference, they work a lot, so it's really hard to get synchronized. But now that everyone is stuck at home because of this quarantine, finally we can all catch up. Hand letters have become so rare these days. I guess that's exactly what makes receiving them so special. And it doesn't even have to be a long letter, it can be a simple thank you note. And to make it even more unique, we can fold it into a heart using origami techniques that I've already mentioned earlier. By the way, my paper is a simple printer paper, totally white. I've just quickly painted it myself with watercolor. If we cannot go for a real picnic in the nature, we can still make one at home. Or maybe at the balcony if it's big enough. Just bring a lot of finger food and have a feast. And now let's talk about some fun things that you can do at home alone. As long as I have my books on my Kindle with me, it's absolutely impossible for me to get bored. By the way, just this month, Paolo Coelho is giving away his books for free. I've been doing so much online shopping recently. If only retail therapy was covered by my health insurance. I'm definitely not a big gamer, but at some point I just couldn't stop playing Angry Birds. There's something extremely satisfying about this game. It's like a color therapy. I think they designed the graphics in such a way that people find playing it relaxing. Even my husband enjoyed playing it, and he's like a real gamer. So yeah, unbelievable. One thing I do love since I was a kid is completing puzzles. I have many books in my parents' place, and I'll be buying more for my daughter, obviously when she gets older. For now I just keep on playing Scrabble, and I find it a very fun and pleasant mental exercise. If you log into your account on Google Maps, you can save all the places you'd like to visit in the future. And when the right time comes, you can easily navigate between them. Google is perfect for that purpose. In Japan, it has literally saved my life. You just press directions, and it tells you what public transport you need to take, and even how much your trip will cost you. Just a couple of times I had to ask for help in Metro. I'm sure there is a language that you'd like to learn or improve, so why not spend some time learning useful phrases, polishing grammar, or watching TV shows with subtitles in that language. I speak six languages and I studied most of them at home. And finally, the last group of things I'd like to discuss with you today is self-love. For me, self-love starts with a bubble bath. I just love them. I find them so ultimately relaxing. It's just Unbelievable what effect they have on me. So if you go for a bubble bath, another thing you can do at the same time or separately, it's up to you, you could deep condition your hair or do a facial for your face. Your face and your hair are going to be very thankful for that. Another thing I really enjoy doing are guided meditation. For me, the sleeping guided meditations are just priceless. And here on YouTube, I can really recommend you Jason Stevenson. He's like the best. Short-term fasting has amazing health benefits for your body. For me, unfortunately, it's difficult to do when I have an active social life, like there are so many temptations. Now that I'm at home and I don't see other people eating around me, it's actually easier for me to control my eating behavior. I saved the best one for the last, sleep. Get a lot of it. You don't know when's the next time you'll be able to sleep so much, so take advantage of the situation. If you found this video to be interesting or helpful, don't forget to like it, subscribe to my channel, and they see you on Facebook and Instagram. Bye! Is that your exercise? That's so funny. Lying down. That's so You're funny. supposed to do something far flight. Bend over or something. Or... Well, I'm getting dressed. <laughs> my watch. <laughs> How many can you do there? <laughs> I made you five! <laughs>